My business has experienced so much growth last year and I'm actually coming up to my fourth year of business. And I've kind of been reflecting on my experiences and everything that I've learned. So I thought it'd be good to put this video together on the five things I wish I knew when I started my product photography business. The first one is I wish I had invested in artificial lighting way sooner than what I did. Probably for the first like year and a half, I used natural light and I shot in the corner of my bedroom and it was just mostly flat lay work. And it wasn't until I had a negative experience with a client where I had sent the gallery and essentially she said the photos weren't up to scratch. Um, I think there was a particular vibe that she was after that was only achievable with artificial lighting, with studio lighting, um, but I'm not sure she had the budget for that. But anyway, that prompted me to invest in my first studio light and I have never looked back. And so that negative experience really turned into a positive one for me because when I started learning how to use artificial lighting, the quality of my work really increased. And because I work in the skincare and beauty niche, there was this style of photo, which is pretty much what you see now from, from my portfolio that I wanted to achieve so badly and I knew that I had to use artificial lighting in order to achieve that look. And it was since then that my business actually grew so much more because the quality of my work had drastically increased and people noticed that. And so if you find that you're not booking enough clients, it could be that the quality of your work isn't quite there. And that's kind of what happened with me. I was still booking clients, but I wasn't booking the clients I wanted to attract my business. And so ever since I invested in studio lighting and I was really focusing on improving my work and just getting better every single day, that's when I had really big growth in my business and I started to attract all of these incredible brands to my business that I have the absolute pleasure of still working with today. Now, if artificial lighting is something that's completely new to you, I have two videos that you can watch, one on continuous lighting and one on strobe lighting. I know that artificial lighting can be a really daunting topic and it's hard to know where to start. I was very intimidated by strobe lighting when I first started out, but I love a strobe light. They're, they're, they're great. And so that then leads me into my second point, which is investing in your education. I did not invest in my education or my business for a good year and a half, and I very much regret that. And that's a huge reason why I created my online course, Become a Brand Photographer, because it is the course I wish I had when I first started my photography business. It can be really hard to navigate this industry when it comes to contracts, workflows, how to actually like do photography in terms of getting really nice lighting, how to edit, Photoshop is another minefield, how to use Photoshop to create really creative images and the business side of photography as well. How to deal with difficult clients, how to pitch yourself, how to work with models, how to organize a location shoot, model release forms and call sheets and all the things that come with being a photographer. Majority of all that I worked out by myself because there wasn't really anything around that taught all of those things in the one course. And there have been courses that I've invested in along the way. Mainly for me, it's been Photoshop courses. Um, if you are not learning Photoshop and you're a product photographer, I highly recommend get your butt into it ASAP because it is an absolute game changer when you can use Photoshop to create an entirely different image. And I've also reached out to other product photographers who I admire who don't offer any kind of coaching or courses. And I'm like, hey, can I pay you to learn this thing that you did in this photo? Because that's really cool and I would love to expand on my knowledge. That is okay to do as well. And I would encourage that. Just make sure that you're willing to pay the other person for their knowledge and not just asking for it for free. And so that's why investing in your education is such a crucial thing to do, I think, right from the start, because it will fast track your growth and the quality of your work. 
The goal as a photographer is to attract clients to our business, people that we would dream of working with. And one of the best ways to do that is with our portfolio, a strong, high quality portfolio. So if you are someone who wants to enter into the industry of product photography, go and check out my online course, Become a Brand Photographer. It has everything in there that you need to get started. I'm also working on brand new content for it. So it is kind of like the course that keeps on giving where you just purchase it one time and you get access to all the updates I make completely for free. And if you want a little discount, you can use the code YouTube for 10% off. And of course, if you have questions on the course as to whether it's the right fit, always feel free to send me a DM on Instagram or pop me an email. The third thing I wish I knew when I started my product photography business is communication with clients. When you offer any kind of service, it's really important to be friendly, but yet still have a level of professionalism within your communication. In other words, I'm not your bestie. Now, everybody has different communication styles and that's totally okay. And I think it's really important to try and match the communication style of the client that you're working with. But the thing is, is that sometimes you can be overly friendly to the point where people feel like they can treat you as more of a friend than a professional business owner. And I've experienced this mainly when people have brought their emotions into the communication. And I'm someone who will never get emotional in my communication. I very much like to remain friendly and polite and professional. If there's an issue with something, there's always a solution is my mindset. We don't have to get emotional about it. And so when I started my business, I think I was probably overly friendly and I wanted to have like a really good friendly relationship with everybody to be like, oh, you know, I want you to feel like I'm I'm your, your real life friend. And while I have had clients that have turned into real life friends, which is absolutely incredible. I'm so grateful. I think it's very important to still maintain a level of professionalism in your communication when you talk to clients. And it can be really hard to find that balance and navigate that kind of communication with each client. Uh, but ever since our project manager Kiri came on board, I feel like our business has an even more of a professional front she is an incredible communicator. She has the perfect balance of friendly, yet we're a professional service. We're not your best friend and you can't treat us like your best friend either. And so when you're communicating with someone right from the start, it's important to set those expectations of how you want to be treated and how you want to be communicated with. And that's where your branding and how you portray yourself online also comes into play. And that's just like a whole other topic I could talk about in a separate video. The fourth thing I wish I knew when I started my product photography business was to get a really good accountant right from the start and take note of my company structure along the way. So I started my business as a sole trader under my own ABN and eventually we have worked our way up to a company now that my partner Alistair is on board um, as a videographer. We have a trust and our company Timber Media House acts as the trustee to the trust. So last year I got a little bit caught out at end of financial year when I was doing my tax return, there were some things that I should have organized way earlier in my business and my company structure. Um, and that was a huge learning curve for me to be like, oh, okay, one, I need to touch base with my accountant probably every six months and I need to pay way more attention to my finances. And even this year, when we were talking to our accountant a couple of weeks ago, I was thinking like, yep, I probably should have touched base with you end of last year. Because as your business grows, you're going to earn more money. That money has to be managed well. And it's really important to find a good accountant who has your best interests at heart and somebody who can deal with complex um, business structures and complex tax returns. And I know that when we start a business, we're not earning that much money and we probably don't think that we need to really pay too much attention to our accounting. If you do it right from the start, you will thank yourself 
years later, trust me. And also find an accountant who thinks forward for you. So for example, we have bought property, we bought off the plan, and in a couple of years, we're going to have to take out a loan. And because we own our own business, there are certain things that we have to do right now to help us prepare for that loan. I wouldn't even have known what to do if it weren't for our accountant saying, all right, well, we need to do this, this, and this in order to prepare you for your mortgage. So yes, accounting, very, very, very important. The fifth thing I wish I knew when I started my product photography business was the importance of workflows. So a couple of examples. I used to book clients into my schedule before I would get a signed contract and a deposit. And I would start pre-production work before I had those things. And so people would say, yeah, would love to go ahead. I'm like, great, here's the contract. And it would take them like a week or so to sign it. And so I'd do all this work and they just say, sorry, but we found another photographer or we don't have the budget right now to go ahead, even though they said they wanted to. And it was just a bit of a headache. And so now when we onboard someone, we must have a signed contract first and a deposit before we can even put someone in the calendar and start any kind of pre-production. The other thing that I was kind of afraid to do as well was ask more questions. I was kind of under the impression that people didn't really want to do much work on filling out a brief and that if I could just bring all the ideas to them and kind of just work it out from the little information that I had to be like, all right, this, this will be enough. We have a much more detailed brief now compared to when the business was started. And I'm not afraid to ask little questions that I need answered in order to do a good job. And so when you're working with clients, it's just really important to have good softwares, good workflows that allow both of you to have a seamless client experience. So we have a platform called Dubsado that manages all of our projects, all our contracts, our invoices and our briefs are all done through Dubsado and everything is kept in the one place. And then for our pre-production, we use a platform called Milanote, which is such an incredible platform that is a collaborative platform, which means that you can easily share the link with your client. They can add things to the board. They can edit as well and put in their ideas. And we also require approval of that pre-production board at least two weeks prior to when the shoot begins. And so having that pre-production board approved prior to your photo shoot, that will help limit the possibility of a reshoot after you've given the images. And it actually took us a while to come to a workflow that works for both us and the client and systems and platforms that are really user friendly um, that help us do our job so much better. Now, I would love to know if there's anything that you wish you knew when you started your business, leave them in the comments. Um, and obviously, if you have any questions on anything I've covered in this video, leave it in the comments and I'll get back to you. But otherwise, I will see you in the next video.